uh, thank you very much for inv for inviting me here in Rijeka. Uh, here I am actually, or in my university, I'm actually in two rows. Uh, uh, from one side, I am, uh, as already said, uh, working on the field of innovation policies. And the other side, uh, I'm working on, or acting as a head of center for cooperation with the economy. So I was sometimes forced to balance or to act as a mediator between different uh, worlds, the world of scientists and the world of economy and different stakeholders. And uh, this double road actually show, uh, showing the gap in the perception of the role of these two spheres. And therefore I uh, decided to uh, have a short presentation regarding the science and society relationship uh, and to represent some results, we finished in one FP6 project, uh, finished uh, a little ago. And uh, uh, actually, we can found out that current condition of scientific and technological research is contradictory. From the one side, research becoming increasingly significant and visible and also expectation of the society about science and to the main civilization challenges at the moment like environmental, agenic of population, economic crisis were increasing. But on the other side uh, we are facing increasing mistrust toward science and technology and widespread indifference with respect not to scientific discoveries and technological innovation, but to the scientific itself and uh, technological and research problems met by scientists and research institutions. This manifestation is shown by actually decreasing social status of scientists, also in the terms of salaries increasing obstacles met by young people in accessing scientific careers, low investment in research, for example, in the Slovenia. Uh, we're facing this year uh, uh, persons of DGP, GDP uh, oriented to R&D uh, fall below 1%, which is actually far away of this famous Lisbon 3% three, three in 2010. And we are also, especially in Europe, uh, uh, facing uh, media debate around so-called public sector as a not clear <coughs> defined part of society in many cases lead to this increased mistrust. Well, this process, socialization of research, is mainly problem of European Union. And uh, we have to somehow rethink our strategies as a scientist and scientifics and uh, uh, scientific institutions. So we have to re rethink our strategies and policies in order to reposition ourselves into society. As we are now talking uh, beyond industrial society. Actually, there are different interpretation of this shift and the new types of society, like sociological, economical, and physiological. They all converge into common set of change process. <laughs> uh, I will kind of, uh, account some of them, like modif modified relation between social actors and social structures, so-called. Growth of uncertainty and instability social and cultural diversification, weakness of social boundaries, globalization and localization. Uh, all these uh, concepts uh, actually means certain risks uh, which can affect both science and society. And from this field, two main critical areas are identified. First area is 
identity of scientific and technological research in the way of self-controlling and steering. And second is uh, adaptation of science to society. From the first point, uh, Europe is, let me say, different, uh, as it was uh, uh, said before, unified by letters. So, EU countries have different approaches toward, the chain, uh, to the, toward the, these changes, despite general objectives of European research area published a few years before. And the actors involved in these projects, policymakers and scientists and the researchers itself, are very often or even usually not fully aware of the changes affecting science and technology. Uh, and second critical area is science and society relationship. These relations are increasingly intense and complex. Interactions are at a different level in many ways of, and through multiple channels. For example, through the concept of open innovations, R&D activities somehow escape from the universities and research institutions into much wider forms, including also the uh, individuals, small, small enterprises, etc. These relations, uh, uh, or sorry, big challenge of Europe is to avoid process of technological drift leading to deterioration of social and economic system and decreasing depends from technology products, products elsewhere outside of Europe. Uh, possibilities and place for small and developing countries in this process, in my perception, are in two ways, and one of them is innovation and second is internationalization. Uh, looking for the first one, innovation, the importance of innovation in improving Europe's competitiveness is actually uh, uh, somehow accepted in many countries uh, published in uh, current and future policy instruments like framework program uh, or horizon 2020. Uh, on the other side, uh, there is, let me say, in my personal way, a uh, uh, concept of internationalization, especially for the small and developing countries, is not so clear enough. Uh, because it's always the question, what is our answer to the crisis? Opening to accept new ideas uh, uh, or closing uh, 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 start to think about itself and go inside. Uh, need and importance of internationalization of the science is seen in the inter internationalization strategy of leading countries. Uh, short desk research via internet shows that the leading countries have published their science inter internationalization strategies more often than small and developing one. And from our exper experience as a young and small university in Slovenia, we see and we can find some success in the field of internationalization research on one point, but also weak points in the field of sharing and joining ideas and uh, ex especially researching scientists and the researchers. And uh, in these scopes, I actually see the main value and uh, added value of the Center for Advanced Studies here in Rijeka. Thank you.